Okay, I was asked um, how to model uh, the body of a particular guitar and um, I'm going to show you the technique that I used uh, pretty much to do my Les Paul and I guess I did it on the Telecaster, uh, the double neck. Um, I may have made, uh, there's two different ways to do it uh, or two different ways that I've used. Uh, one is using curves and one is just with points, extruding points. Um, I think I used just extruding points when I, when I did the Les Paul. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't quite remember. Uh, so I'm going to show you how, how to do it on this guitar uh, anyhow. Um, I know some people are going to cringe at this, but uh, you know, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, uh, don't do it. <laughs> so we're going to try to do this. So we've got the background image here and I'm just making the body. All right. Cause that's what, that's what uh, this guy asked for. So. All right, so my 3D cursor is here. doesn't really matter. I'm going to bring in a curve uh, path. And uh, it doesn't even really matter what orientation it's in, I guess. But I'm going to uh, rotate Z90. Bring it down. Go into edit mode and just get this point roughly lined up at, at the bottom in the middle. Okay. And I'm just going to take these points and start pulling them over. And basically uh, selecting and going G to pull the points over. All right, and just start rounding it out till you get uh, a curve that you feel is pleasant. You can go back into object mode and look at it periodically. And it does take some uh, tweaking here and there. But once you get it okay, select the last point and you're just going to hit E and G, E and G and pull, E and G. Now I'm going to use a lot of points, so um, I'm not worried about that. I hope you're not too worried about it either. E and G and just go up along the profile of that. Yeah. I'm just going to do it kind of quick here. Get up to the top there and then I'm going to kind of come around and use a couple of other points there. I may have messed that up. Let's have a look at that. That's all right. ENG. And I always have trouble uh, when I don't have the particular guitar. I don't know what it does here. <clears throat> so I don't know if you want to come down here and go across. I'm just going to go underneath and continue the curve. I never know what it does unless I have the guitar or a picture of the back. And this is the only image that I was sent for this. So we're just going to come along here and, and just do what we can do. All right, so it goes pretty quick and then we'll have a look at it and see how, how nice we follow the contour. I'm going to be converting this curve into a mesh and it will generate a lot of points, but um, I'm not worried about that, like I said. All right, when we come down to here, let's have a look at that and see how close it is and how smooth it is, if it's reasonably okay. This area you gotta be careful of right in here, I have found, uh, because it can look really unnatural and I may not get it that good. And then down here, uh, this is sort of a weird shape, it seems to come to a, a point and I don't know how well I can do that point. I think we're going to do something like that. You can spend as much time as you want on this. All right, so once I had the profile I liked, again, I'm just demonstrating this. I'm not doing it super slow. You would go Alt-C and convert it to a mesh. And then come down, and I guess we'll take this point and just make it relatively even and I'm just going to select both and have to make a face so it's not much of a point but but there it is okay so uh, let's go into edit mode and you'll see if I select it all there's a lot of points okay select it all and hit E to extrude and bring it up to the thickness of the guitar again I don't know what the thickness of the guitar is let me just have a look at that okay and now I will commit the ultimate sin. I will select this edge, entire edge, shift alt and click that edge and I have to make a face. Oh, how dare I? And I'll do the same on the bottom one. I have to make a face. Let's get rid of the grid floor. Okay, 
Let's also select it and control N in case any polys are flipped. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to select that upper edge and lower edge if you want the same curvature on top and bottom. And I'm gonna go control B and I'm gonna pull back to bevel and I'm just gonna roll my mouse up a couple times. And the more you do it, the smoother it'll get. Now, just if we do that, you see it looks okay. Uh, that's weird, but you know, and again, I don't know how smooth that is. Now, you'll notice some smoothing errors and issues. So I'm gonna, uh, not gonna deal with that right now. I'm gonna turn that off. The benefit of doing this, the benefit of doing it this way with this big end gone here and on the back, uh, instead of putting a subdivision surface is you can do booleans in this relatively easily. So for example, if I go into wireframe and I see uh, it looks like these volume knobs, looks like there's a circle and then there's the knob or volume or tone. So if I just put my 3D cursor there and I bring in say a circle, just default values, and I scale it to the approximate size of that. And then I'm going to hit F to make a face. It's another end gone. E to extrude and bring it down to, to give it some thickness, like a cylinder essentially. All right, and I just want to push that in so I have a little bit of depth uh, going in so I can make a bit of a hole, right? Um, I can now take that, Shift D and G, and I can, I can do them all at the same time. I can do that one, Shift D and G. Okay, so let's say the holes go there. I'm going to select all three of those and Control J. And um, I'm also going to go Control A, rotation and scale, in case I did any scaling or rotating in object mode. And now I can select the body and come up to the modifiers and choose Boolean, Difference, and with the eyedropper, I will select those and hit Apply. I'm going to select them and hide them. I'm not getting rid of them. And I've got a bit of a hole. Now, this is not overly smooth uh, yet. What I would then do is I would go into edit mode and I would shift alt and click the edge. Now, because of the way I've done this, I'm gonna to have to do it in multiple parts and if you get an extra edge, get rid of it. You just want the perimeter of these uh, volume and tone holes, <laughs> okay? And now I would go control B and bevel, pull back and give a few segments, two or three, okay? Come out and just have a look. Okay, and again, it doesn't look that smooth, but when I hit smoothing, it will look better, but we'll have to, we're going to have to do a few things. So um, what I'll do is I'll bring back those, and I can use those. If I go into individual origin and edit mode, and I select them all, and I look down, say, in wireframe, I can scale, hit S and scale them all at the same time equally so they fit that hole. I can scale in the Z. Okay, maybe bring them down in. Uh, let's see what that looks like. And then maybe take the tops. I don't know what these volume knobs look like very well. I'll just do that. Now, once again, um, this is an end gone here. I can smooth these and you could, you know, otherwise you could do a bit more work if you wanted to. Let's, what if I extruded them down a little bit? Just a little bit like that so I get that weird, oh gosh. Nah, who would want a volume knob like that? Well, you do whatever you want, or you could do other circles and actually do subdivision surface. You wouldn't want to do it with, um, well, I don't think you would anyhow with that end gun, but perhaps it would look okay. I'll take it back. Maybe it's not too, too bad with that end gun. I think if you tried to do any work on it, you might have some trouble. Well, let's see, let's see. Well, you could do stuff. You could, you, you can work on that. Um, I don't really need to, but yeah. I, well, I wouldn't do just that. I probably have to rebuild it. Grab that edge. E and S. E and S. E and Alt M. And then you could put edge loops in if you wanted to depending on where you want it to. You know, so, okay, so um, we don't have smoothing on yet, so I'll just show you what you would do is you would do all your cutaways for your pickups and whatever else, 
And then once you were done that, you would hit smooth and you would say, oh, it looks, looks really terrible. Go back in, all right, and here's the trick. Select all the faces, and you would probably have more once you've cut here and there. You'd have other little pieces. Select them all and just go E. Extrude, and that's it. Don't do anything, okay? You would have to do the same thing on the bottom, but if you didn't cut into anything, uh, you see you see the shading there, a little bit different? Just E, all right? And if you go into your shading, ambient occlusion and choose a matte cap that shows sort of shininess um, so these don't won't look good uh, this one might look a bit better but you can see I mean it looks looks all right it looks all right to me anyhow all right so that's you know one way that you could do the guitar uh, and avoid the subdivision surface and end up having uh, large end guns which easily let you cut away oh yeah and, and I wanted to show you this uh, you don't have to leave it like that what I would probably do is I'd select those in, in E or inset and just have them like that okay so the, the, the sides are smooth and that's like that but you're gonna bring those back and you know you're not really gonna see them very well you know, you just get want the impression of a hole, and that's probably still too big. Ah, well, I should be, yeah, I should be doing it that way. Uh, if you want to do this technique, you select them all while you're in uh, individual origins. You know, that kind of thing. Okay, so, I mean, it works. Anyways, hope that helps.